This week on Rochelle's Daily Wire Video Edition, we return to the U.S. Supreme Court. Why? Well, because the justices have granted certiorari to consider a third bankruptcy case for the term to begin in October of 2019. I guess it's a good deal that the justices have already taken on three bankruptcy cases, because the more they decide, the better off I suppose we are. On the other hand, I know of at least one really good, very important case that is percolating its way toward the Supreme Court, and I have some concern that the justices might deny certiorari in that case, saying, listen, we already have three bankruptcies on our docket, and three's a crowd, and we're not going to take a fourth. In any event, let me tell you about this third case. It's called Rodriguez versus FDIC. Here's how it came up. A bank went bust back in the banking bust 10 years ago. It was taken over by the FDIC. The holding company for the bank also ended up in bankruptcy. As a result of the losses by the bank, there was a big whopping tax re refund that was paid or would be paid to the holding company. However, the FDIC says, listen, we, or shall we say the bank, generated the losses, and so we, as receiver for the bank, should receive the tax refund. The trustee for the holding company said, no, there's nothing more than a debtor-creditor relationship between the holding company and the bank, so therefore, I, as trustee, using my strong-arm powers, get to keep the tax refund, and the FDIC only has a general unsecured claim. The courts, that is to say the circuit courts, are pretty much evenly split, four to three, on how you resolve the issue. Uh, some courts say that we will uh, follow state law. If there is a valid trust relationship or agency, then the bank gets it. Otherwise, if it's just a debtor-creditor relationship, the trustee for the holding company gets to keep the refund. On the other hand, some courts say there is federal common law, which says that Presumptively, a tax refund goes to the corporation that incurred the losses. Well, this is a case to be decided in a term that will begin in October of 2019. Uh, how it comes down, goodness knows, but I do know that this is exactly the kind of a case that the justices like because it deals with the question of the circumstances under which federal courts are authorized and empowered to create federal common law. I am Bill Rochelle, Editor-at-Large for American Bankruptcy Institute. I am signing off now, and I will see you again same time next week with something interesting and perhaps important that's happened in the world of bankruptcy.